So we're going to learn how we can solve quadratic equations by using a quadratic formula. And we will, we, well we know that ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is our quadratic equation. So what if we worked through this and completed the square for any values of a, b, and c? So see if you can follow along with this, because that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this equation here and solve it by completing the square. To make things, the algebra, a little bit easier, I'm actually going to divide everything by a to start with here. So if we did that, the equation would look like this. x squared plus b divided by ax plus c divided by a equals zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the other side, and then I'm going to complete the square here. So I would take half of this, so instead of b divided by a, it'll be b divided by 2a, and I'm going to square it. So if I square that, I would get b squared, and if I squared this, I'd get 4a squared. So that that's what would go here if I was completing the square. And then of course to keep things balanced, I would need to add that to the other side of the equation as well. So now I've completed my completed the square, so this would just become x plus b over 2a all squared. That would be my perfect, perfect square, because b over 2a squared would be b squared over 4a squared, and if I doubled this I would get b over a. Now on this side, I've got these two things to do here, so I need to get common denominators. So I've got negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared, and these need common denominators. So I need to multiply this one by 4, top and bottom by 4, now I've got 4a. I'm supposed to have 4a squared, so I need to multiply it by another a. I'll put the a in front here. So this would become, whoops, and it's negative. So negative c over a, when I multiply top and bottom by 4a, so that it has 4a squared in the denominator and 4ac up top. Now I can say this is the same thing as, and I'm going to start with the positive one, so I'm going to write the positive one first, b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay, so b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared is what we have on the right side. And now I'm ready to square root both sides because I'm trying to solve for x. So square root of this would get rid of the squared. So this would be the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 4a squared. And now to isolate x, I just need to bring this term to this side. So that's negative b over 2a. Ooh, I forgot the plus or minus. Easy to do. So remember when we square root, it's always plus or minus. Uh, so plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now let's see if we can tidy this up a bit here. I could, no, I can't square root this, this numerator because this is a, there's a plus or minus here. So I just have to leave this as the square root of b squared minus 4ac, 4 times a times c, but the denominator just has one term in it, and I'm able to square root that because the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is a. And then, isn't this nice, the denominators happen to be the same, so we can combine these. and get that x equals negative b, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And so, instead of having to complete the square every single time, we've now generated an equation or a formula that allows us to solve for x. And this is what we call the quadratic formula. And you'll use it so often, it's, it's good to take the time to 
to memorize that one. Like I say, you'll practice it enough that you should you should have it memorized. And so just remember, what do these A, B, and C things represent? Well, A was the number in front of x squared, B was the coefficient of x, and C was the constant term. So let's see how we can use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. So let's, let's give this one a go here. Let's do x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So according to the quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. It's a good idea when you're first getting used to this formula to actually list what a, b, and c are. So a is the coefficient of x squared, which would be a 1 because there's no number there. B is the coefficient of x, that's positive 3, and C is the constant term uh, at the end here, which is 1. So it's just a matter of putting them in the equation here. So negative B, B is 3, so negative 3 plus or minus the square root of B squared, so 3 squared minus 4 times A is 1, and C is also 1, all over 2 times A, A is 1. So now it's just a matter of tidying this up. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1 times 1 is 4 all over 2 times 1 which is 2. So we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5, 9 minus 4 is 5, all divided by 2. And these would be our solutions for x. Negative 3 so one would be negative 3 plus the square root of 5, all divided by 2. And the other one would be negative 3 minus the square root of 5, all divided by 2. But it's just convenient to leave it as negative 3 plus or minus root 5, all divided by 2. So that's, that's how we use the quadratic formula to um, come up with the solutions or the roots of our equations. When we look at this quadratic equation, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, this little piece in the middle here, b squared minus 4ac, is actually really important. They, they, we call b squared minus 4ac, whatever that number is, when you work that out, b squared minus 4ac, we call it the discriminant. And what does that mean? Well, it means whatever this number is here, whatever number is under the square root, is going to tell us how many answers our quadratic equation is going to have. Remember back when we were graphing them, we said a quadratic equation might look like this, in which case then there's no solutions. Or a quadratic equation, when, function when we graph it, might look like this, in which case there's two roots, so here we have two solutions. Or a quadratic equation might look like this, in which case there is only the one solution. So we can actually tell by looking at the quadratic formula and just looking at this number under the square root if there'll be no solution, one solution, or two solutions. Let's go back to that example that we just looked at, which was x squared plus 3x plus 1. When we work this thing out, it was negative b, so that's negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. And then when we, we tidied it up, we saw that this was the square root of 5. And we saw then that there was two solutions here. One of them was negative 3 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2, and the other one was minus 3 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So if the number under the square root, that's the b squared minus 4ac, if that's greater than 0, like a number like 5 or 1 or 7 or 22, 
we'll get two answers, because we'll have negative 3 plus that divided by 2, and we'll have negative 3 minus that divided by 2, and that'll give us two solutions. But what if our quadratic equation looked like this? Say we had one that looked like this. Well, when we go to the quadratic formula, here a is going to be uh, 1, b is going to be minus 6, and c is going to be 9. So negative b, well b is negative 6, so when we go negative b, that's minus minus 6, so that's positive 6, so that's something to be careful of, watch your signs. Uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so we've got to square this, so negative 6 times negative 6, that's 36, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, and a was 1. So when we work this out, we get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 times 9, that's 36, all over 2a. And look at what we have here, 36 minus 36 is 0. So the discriminant, the number under the square root, in other words, b squared minus 4ac, this worked out to be 0. So now when we're doing our answers, we get x is equal to 6 plus 0 divided by 2, and the other one would be 6 minus 0 divided by 2. Well, those are both 3. So they're really the same solution. So there is one unique solution if the discriminant b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So if your number under the square root is equal to 0, well, there'll only be one solution, because you'll just be going 6 plus 0 divided by 2, and the other one will be 6 minus 0 divided by 2. So if the discriminant equals 0, one solution. And then we could get into another example here. Let's say we had 4x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Well, then x would equal, let's do our a, b, c again. So a is 4, b would be minus 2, and c would be minus 1. So x would equal negative b, so there's minus minus 2, that's 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, minus 4 times a times c. And I meant to make this a plus 1, sorry. So let's try that again. Uh, x is equal to negative b, so that's positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. a is 4. So here we have 4 minus 4 times 4 is 16, all over 2 times 4 is 8. So we'd get 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12. Whoa! Square root of negative? not going to work. So you can't square root a negative number. So in this situation there will be no solutions because you cannot square root a negative number. So we are done with that question. So there won't be any solution if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. If your discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is less than 0, then you won't have any solutions. So, the number under the square root, when we do our quadratic formula, the b squared minus 4ac will tell us how many solutions this, this question will have. If, if what's under the square root is positive, we get 2. If one, what's under the square root is 0, we only get 1. And if what's under the square root is negative, we're not going to get any. So we'll look at this. Here's our quadratic formula. So 
So A would equal 3, B is going to be minus 2, and C is going to be minus 5. So our solutions will be negative B, so minus a minus 2, that's plus 2, plus or minus the square root of this squared, so negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus or minus, oops, B squared minus 4 times A times C, 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. So negative B, 2 plus or minus the square root of B squared, 4 minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. So tidying it up. Now here we have negative 4 times 3 times negative 5. So here we're going to have a negative times a negative, which is going to make a positive. And 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. Over 2 times 3 is 6. And 4 plus 60 is 64. So in this case, this one works out quite nice. We can square root 64. The square root of 64 is 8. And then 2 plus 8 would be 10. So this is 10 over 6. Or 2 minus 8 is negative 6 over 6. And so we can say when we reduce our fractions, this would be 5 thirds. x equals 5 thirds. Or negative 6 divided by 6 would be negative 1. So it's simply a matter of making sure you have the quadratic formula right and that you substitute the correct values in for a, b, and c and then do your algebra correctly and there we have solved the equation using the quadratic formula. So we've now learned four different methods by which we can solve a quadratic equation. So if we've got x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0 we could sketch a graph of it using graphing calculator or software and we could see that x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to minus 2. Or we've learned that we could factor it, two numbers that multiply to this and add to this and set each factor equal to 0 and we'd get x is minus 2 and minus 1. Or we could complete the square, follow the steps for completing the square and get x equals minus 2 or x equals minus 1. Or as we learned in this video, we could use the quadratic formula, which really is completing the square in a general sense, but by just substituting in values for a, b, and c, and we get x is minus 2 or x equals minus 1. So when you have a question, unless it's specifically by a certain type, then there typically are four options available to you. Um, the factoring method, of course, is only going to work if you're able to factor the expression and the graphing method is really only going to work well if you've got the technology to do that. So your two algebraic methods are completing the square and the quadratic formula. These will work for all quadratic equations. And then remember that the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. That's the number underneath the square root in the quadratic formula. Remember if that number, b squared minus 4ac, is greater than 0, in other words it might look like this, x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus root 4. So the number under the square root here is greater than 0. If it's greater than 0, we know we're going to get two solutions. And if the number under the square root is equal to 0, like we have here, then we know there's only going to be one solution. And if the number under the square root is negative, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, it's negative, there will be 0 solutions.